That makes me want to run. If I won't spin your wheel, your spokes broke. Amen. Hallelujah. I am glad I'm in God's house. Amen. Ain't no other, no other place I'd rather be is be in the Lord's house. Amen. I love him today. He's the best friend I've got. Amen. If you have a copy of the Word of God, 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter 1. And I just uh, really woke up this morning and felt inclined to, to preach here. And I appreciate your faithfulness to the Lord. Amen. Had a wonderful time in Sunday school. Taught on the Trinity this morning. There's three in heaven that bear record. The Father, Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. We are Christian, distinctively Christian. We believe in one God who's chosen to manifest himself in three persons. Amen. It's all throughout the Word of God. Amen. Somebody said, how could that be, preacher? How in the world could God do that? Hey, he stamped it throughout scriptures, the Trinity. How in the world? Somebody this morning we was talking, you just take water. You've got water, right? If you drop the temperature below 32 degrees, you got ice. If you raise it up a certain amount, then it boils and it goes into steam. Uh, but they're all H2O, amen. God knows what he's doing, amen. I like the one about natural light, amen. Uh, God said, the Bible says, God is light and in him is no darkness. 1 John 5, 20. Jesus said, I am the light of the world, amen. Do you know what makes up natural light? Rays, three rays, Red, blue, and green. God has put it throughout the whole Word of God and in the things of the world. Amen? He loves us enough to get us the truth. Amen? I want you to look with me in First Peter this morning and in verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered abroad through Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bethany, uh, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his abundant mercy hath begotten us unto a lively hope. I'm going to preach on that lively hope this morning. Unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. Father, thank you again for this lively hope. We trust now that you would do what we cannot do, and that the Holy Spirit of God would have preeminence in this service. and He would magnify the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank thee for the death, burial, and resurrection of thy darling Son. Speak to our hearts, make us aware, assure us, encourage us of this lively hope in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to deal with three words this morning. The first is going to be the word inheritance. Now look, uh, I don't want to meddle too much. I don't like meddling preachers, do you? But this is the scripture, and it talks about the word inheritance. It's simply a process of passing on material property or gain from one generation to another. Now look, the scripture says, A good man leaveth his children's children an inheritance. That's what the scripture says. You know what? We ought to work hard. We ought to save, amen, be diligent and save, and we ought to make the next generation better off than we are, amen? I believe that, and uh, I think we ought to do that. Well, you know what? Jesus has made it good for you and I, amen? We've got an inheritance coming that fadeth not away that's incorruptible. You do know this, uh, and I, unfortunately, I have to, I've had to go through this as a pastor and counsel people. But when people pass away and, and, and uh, their will and testament comes out, sometimes there's problems, amen? 
hey, let me encourage you to do this. Make it clear. Etch it in stone what you feel God would have you to do before that time comes. Uh, don't leave your children and grandchildren and everyone in chaos. I've seen it. I've prayed with them. I've seen them crying. Uh, they don't know what to do. Make sure you write it down or get it legal, amen? Well, here, God has put some things out that are not only legal, but they are going to happen. We have an inheritance that is incorruptible, undefiled, and fadeth not away, the scripture says. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, first of all, God, when he does something, there's no uh, sly work about it. There's no bad things about it. It's all good. It's all uh, pure, if you will. Do you know God's never done one thing that's not impure? God is light and in him is no darkness. Jesus never sinned. I don't care what any other preacher says. Christ never sinned, no, not one time, amen? He is pure. And so when he went to the cross, you had the pure blood of God. Emmanuel's vein uh, drained at Calvary for you and I. This inheritance uh, was not only uh, given to you and I, but I want you to notice this. He talks about it being incorruptible, for, for an example, what I mean by this, there's nothing fraudulent about it. When God does something, it's all out in the open, amen? It's all out in the open. There's no secrecy about it. There's nothing fraudulent when the Lord does something, amen? Hey, look, before I was saved, you talking about a rebel, buddy. I mean, I didn't want to obey my mom and dad. I didn't want to do what was right. I didn't want to go to school. All I wanted to do is what I wanted to do. And there was a lot of fraudulent things in my life as a young man. But thanks be unto God. What is God best at? He's best at taking something worthless and useless and molding him in to something worthy to be praised for by the Lord. Hey, God took an old rebel, and today I stand before people and proclaim the wondrous works of the Lord Jesus. Why? God chose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. It's all to give him glory and praise. You know what? Somebody said, preacher, somebody passed along. They didn't leave me nothing. It's okay. Don't let that bother you. I mean, we all get hurt. I'm, I'm thinking of a man now that someone died in his family, didn't leave him a dime. He thought he was getting everything, and he didn't get nothing. Amen, hardly anything. I hear of that often, but uh, Peter talks about an inheritance here. He talks about an inheritance. In other words, when you and I get saved, we automatically are born into the family of God. Amen? Now, if you're not born in the family of God, you're heathen. And, and, and if you be without, somebody said, how do you know if you're born or not? How do you know if you're heathen or not? Well, the scriptures tells us. The Bible said if you be without chastisement, you are bastards and not sons. Now, young people, that's not a bad word. So don't, don't walk out of here and say, preacher, used a bad word because I didn't. The scripture says if you be without chastisement, Hebrews 12, you're bastards and not sons. And what the apostle Paul is saying, he uses that word for this reason. He's saying, God's not your father. If you can lie, cheat, steal, do wrong, there is no way you are a child of God if you can do it and not be under conviction or not be corrected by the Holy Ghost of God. Amen? Uh, somebody said, well, I can lie and it don't even bother me. You better check up. Because the apostle Paul said this, uh, when we sin, friend, there's what's called conviction, Holy Ghost conviction. Somebody said, well, I don't know about all that. Hey, look, there's a difference between the conscience and the Holy Spirit of God. Now, here's what it is. God give all of us a conscience, amen? We all got a conscience. What's that mean? You walk in somewhere, you take something, and you steal it. You put it in your pocket. You, when you leave and you're walking out, your conscience speaks along this line. Hey, you, you shouldn't have took that. Your conscience will let you know after you sin, amen? The difference in the Holy Spirit is this. <coughs> if you're a saved child of God <coughs> and you walk over there to take that same, let's say candy bar, 
I like candy bars, do y'all? <laughs> but you walk over there and take that candy bar, and you know you don't have no money, and you're going to take it. The minute you begin to think that you're going to take it, the Holy Spirit will say, don't do that. He'll embed in your heart. You better not do that. Hey, that's the difference in a child of God and a lost person. Amen? Lost person has a conscience. Child of God has a conscience and the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Paul, uh, Peter's saying here this. He said uh, inheritance. What is he talking about? Well, here's what I believe he's talking about. You remember when you were lost? You didn't know God. You wasn't saved. And there come a time that you got saved. Amen. Hallelujah. I am so grateful that I am a child of God. I'm so grateful I don't have to worry about dying and going to hell. No matter what happens in this world, I know, I know, I know that I'm going to heaven. Somebody said, how can you know that? Here's how. These things have I written unto you, that you may know that you have eternal life. Amen. The scripture says it. I know it. I don't have to guess. Well, I got saved and got in the family. Now look, there's coming a day when uh, if the Lord don't, I hope I go through the rapture. I'd just rather go on through the rapture, amen. I, it just come on right now, be all right with me. But if I die before the rapture and you hear somebody say that I'm dead, oh yeah, preacher died, that's a lie. You better not believe that. I'm more alive than I've ever been. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Hey, look. All this in heaven too. Paul said, I am in a straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ. Listen, which is far better, he said. Far better. Nevertheless, it's needful that I abide with you in the flesh. But here's the thought. We got an inheritance waiting for you and I. We do. You didn't know that? If you're saved, Paul, he said an inheritance. First of all, it's incorruptible. There ain't nothing bad about it. There ain't nothing partial about it. It's as pure as you. Now, what kind of inheritance are you talking about, preacher? Well, you don't have to believe this. You can think I'm dreaming, but I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Did you know this? Uh, I, I'm in home improvement, and I love, I love uh, what they call Bellawood floors. I like, I like nice, clean floors. Amen. It's just something about it when you got a nice product you left. Did you know this? The asphalt in heaven is 24 karat. That's right. I'm telling you the truth. The Bible said the streets are paved with gold. Hey, we're using gold. Hey, look, we think it's something to have gold here. It, and it is a value. Don't misunderstand me. But in heaven, guess what? God paves the streets with <laughs> God paves the roads with gold. Hey, now. I want you to imagine this. Can you imagine this? I figured this out one day. I was studying the gates of heaven. And uh, I, I, I don't want to mention the numbers. I've got it written down in my office. But uh, from the book of Isaiah, he said, uh, and he heard a voice. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. What he's saying is, Isaiah said, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up. And his train, meaning his his garments filled the temple. And he talks about three angels. There's a trinity. If you was in Sunday school this morning, uh, he said, behold, one, uh, one spake, another cried. But anyway, and the voice of the angel that cried moved the post of the door. And I studied those doors. Now, keep in mind, those are solid pearl doors. Those gates are pearl. Can you imagine how many clams it's going to take to make real pearl gates like that? God said those gates, and they're humongous. I mean, they're so wide, and the scripture speaks of the pearly gates. I'm telling you, they're wide, and I personally believe this. You don't have to believe it, but I believe it takes an angel to open them gates. 
Can you imagine how wide and how tall? If heaven is the size of the state of Texas, and we know that from scriptures just about, then those gates are humongous, buddy. I'm telling you, they're big. Jasper walls. When you get on inside in there, there's jasper all the way. You know what that jasper is? Rubies and jasper all the way around them. Can you see it? Are you there? It's a place where celestial beings abide. Hey, you know what? There's no light bill in heaven. <laughs> you know why? There ain't even no light. There's no sun. God, how many of you remember the eclipse the other day? If you were in here and you got to see the eclipse, raise your hand. Slip it up real quick. We'll see it. I'm curious on how many people didn't see it. You do know God spoke the other day, don't you? Now look, God speaks through the scriptures. Don't you misunderstand me, but he created the heavens and the earth. And uh, the, the heavens declare the glory of God. Amen? And the other day, you know what God did? God said, I'm going to wake people up down there. And he took the moon and put it in front of the sun like it wasn't nothing. <laughs> now look, here's what I want you to see. Do you remember the media attention? There were people all over the world watching that eclipse the scripture says this when he comes back every eye shall see him now he didn't have no problem at all the other day the entire world was watching this eclipse you know why I serve a God in heaven that loved me and gave himself for me and he is very much in control matter of fact Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now look, heaven is a place no one wants to miss, I promise you. It's an inheritance you don't want to lose out on. Now, Paul talks about an inheritance that fadeth not away. Now, when I thought about this inheritance, the Holy Spirit automatically run me to the prodigal son. You remember the prodigal son, don't you? You remember what he did? Now, you can debate whether the prodigal saved or lost. That's entirely up to you. But I personally believe that he was saved. Okay, you don't have to agree with that. There's good arguments on both sides. I wouldn't fall out with you on either way. It can be preached either way, basically. But I personally believe this prodigal was saved. You know why? He was in the family. Amen. But you know what that prodigal son did? He, he got out in the life and he come up and he said, Give me that which is mine. And do you know what he was saying literally? He wanted his father dead. He, it was okay if his father died. He just wanted his inheritance. He just wanted his money. Amen. And you know what? It wasn't long the father gave him his money. And you know the story. He wasted it and went about it. You remember the story? Everybody familiar with it? You said, I thought we were in First Peter. We are. Hold on a minute. Listen to what he says here. He's given us an inheritance which is incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, watch it, that is kept by the power of God. I want you to see the inability Paul's talking about. Did you know God did so much at Calvary that you can't mess up the future of it? What are you saying, preacher? Preacher. I'm telling you, after I got saved, if it wasn't for grace and repentance, I'd have ruined my salvation if it wouldn't have been for this verse. Don't sit up here and tell me you ain't never got mad or lost your temper since you got saved. Don't sit up here and tell me you ain't never done something wrong since you've invited Christ in your heart. We don't lose our salvation, though. We lose our fellowship with the Lord. Amen. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is of the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now look, 
You say and you believe once saved, always saved? Absolutely. I got a question for anyone watching online or anyone's got a question. I believe once saved, always saved, and here's why. First of all, the Bible teaches it from throughout the whole word of God. I mean, why did Jesus call it eternal life? If it ain't forever, why did he call it eternal life? I mean, that's putting pressure on me that I got to do right all the time or I'm going to lose what God gave me. No, no, no. We don't lose our salvation. We lose our fellowship. But here's a verse. I'll never forget this. I asked a man this one time. He was of another denomination. And I wasn't trying to be smart aleck. I wasn't. I just literally wanted to ask him a question. He believed that if you were saved and you sinned, you lost your salvation. Now he went to Hebrews 6, and Hebrews 6 is, a, to me, Hebrews 6, if, you're, if you study the book, Hebrews 6 doesn't prove you can lose your salvation. It proves the opposite, that you can't lose your salvation. Amen? <laughs> if, if you know what I'm talking about. But he kept on, Brother Mark, asking me about this, and I asked him this. I said, do you believe Jesus was sinless? How many of you here believe it? Jesus was sinless? He, Jesus never sinned at all, did he? Okay. Do you believe Jesus died on the cross? I believe that. Amen. Do you believe that Jesus shed his blood for you? You believe that? Then here's my question. You trying to tell me that the blood of God's son, the divine blood, Emmanuel's vein, doesn't have the power to purchase me eternal redemption. Oh, it's still the blood. <laughs> you couldn't have picked a better song. Because of that blood, we are saved from future wrath, Paul says. <laughs> We are saved from future wrath because I've been born in the family of God and I've accepted the finished work of Calvary. I believe I've turned in repentance and faith and placed my faith in the finished work of Calvary. I can't even mess it up. Paul, Peter says this, that are kept by the power of God. Now watch it. The prodigal. You remember the prodigal? He wanted his... Inheritance? Well, that's sin right there if you ask me. Just wishing that on your father to die, that's sin. Nowadays, it don't surprise us though, does it? Father gave him his inheritance, didn't he? He washed it all away and throwed it all away. And then when he did, his father just totally done away with him, didn't he? No, he didn't. Matter of fact, Brother Marty, in my library, there's that uh, song that I've been playing by Smallwood about the prodigal. You know the one I'm talking about? He ran to me. Cue that for me, please. Every day when that prodigal left, you don't have to believe it. I believe preacher. I believe scripture teaches this. The father would come out there and look, one day my boy's coming back. I've taught him right. I've raised him right. He'd been taught right. He'll come back one day. And that boy was, the Bible said he was in the hog slop. Let me tell you what he was, young people. He was literally wallowing in hog manure and leftover food. And he was eating that which the swine ate. Why are you saying this, Brother Chris? That's how low sin took him. He was in the sin hole. Looking around, had hog manure on him and food and looked at himself and said, What am I doing? My daddy's servants are eating better than this. And the Bible said this. Listen to what it said. It's amazing when the Holy Spirit does something, you can't turn it over. He came to himself. Now, what do you think he he'd been he'd been he'd been in sin all this time? What, what do you think made him come to himself? The Spirit of God 
And the Word of God, James 1 says, the Bible is like the, whosoever looketh into the mirror of God's Word, looketh into the perfect law of liberty. He not being a continual here, but a doer of the Word. God said that book's like a mirror. When you and I get in this word and we see this wood, word, it'll show us what we really are. And that prodigal said, man, what have I done? I've mistreated my father. I've done him wrong. And you know what happened? God threw him out of the camp. I mean, his, his, his daddy threw him out, didn't he? Uh-uh. I believe that father was telling that younger boy. I believe he's telling the older son and, and his service one day. Yes, my boy's coming home one day. I know he's wasted his inheritance. One day he's coming home, though. And there wasn't a little bit, and here come the prodigal. He had done hard and lived in life and wasted his life and wasted what his daddy gave him. He had wounded his daddy bad. How can I ever face my daddy with the way I've treated my father? And the Bible said the prodigal father looked out. Teaches he was looking out. And you know what happened when that prodigal son came home? <laughs> oh, listen to this. I got to fix it in the run. He said, kill the fatted calf. He said, kill the fatted calf. Find the best robe and put it on my boy. Now here's the flip side of that story. That which was lost is repented. That which has run away has come back. And you know what he did? He gave that boy an inheritance basically anyway. The prodigal couldn't even really mess up. Now, here's what I'm trying to tell you. There is a place that waits us that we can't even mess up if we've been saved. I'm telling you, I'm going. You better learn to face the things of this world. Learn to focus. Listen to me. Learn to focus on the Word of God. This world is so filled with sin and pressure and heartache and sorrow. Learn to focus on the Word of God. This is mine for the year. Somebody said, I go through mental struggles. I go through mental pressure. Preacher, what do I do? What do you do? Mark this and down. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, my brethren. Listen. Finally, my brethren. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, watch it, think on these things. Amen? Amen. What is he saying? You better get in the Bible and look at what God's got for you and I. He's done a lot and there's a lot waiting if you don't. You're liable to be depressed and you're liable to get beaten down and shook up by the devil and destroyed. God's not given us the spirit of fear, but of a sound mind, amen? amen. Casting down every imagination that exalts itself above God and bringing into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ, amen? amen. This world's not my home. I'm just passing through. I'm just passing through. And guess what? Somewhere over yonder, Brother Chuck, little old me, oh sinful me, God is building me a mansion. He's building me a place. I'm going to it. And no matter how many times I get away from the Lord, no matter how many times I mess up, I have an inability to ruin my inheritance. You know why? It's kept by the power of God. Now, don't you be confused. I, I'm not going to lose my salvation. I can lose some rewards. But stay doctrinally straight, okay? <laughs> some of you won't take a curve there. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's still, hey, look, there's retribution, friend. If, if you, don't, you don't live for God, you'll lose your rewards. 
Uh, you'll lose a lot of things. In other words, you can make it, you can make it, uh, it would have been a whole lot better when the king of the universe steps down out of heaven and every eye shall see him. He's going, the other day he told the moon, watch this, he told the moon to cover the sky and people all over the world were looking. I walked through my house. God is my witness. I looked up into heaven. I said, man, you know how to get everybody's attention easy. <laughs> I mean, the whole world was looking. There's coming a day when we get up to heaven, you know what he's going to do? He's going to tell the moon and the sun goodbye. Poof. <laughs> Just tell them bye. There's no need for the light up there. Because Jesus is the light of the world. And we're going to see the Son of God in His glory like we've never seen Him before. And the radiance from the Son of God is going to penetrate into the lives of men and women. And you know what? We're going to be doing one thing. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb that was slain for me. Hallelujah. I love Him today. I'm so grateful I'm saved friend of mine used to say it this way, all this and heaven too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. May I encourage you this morning. You ought to write this phrase down if you write things down. The best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. I love him today. Stand with me if you would. Let me ask you a question. As he cues this song, is thy heart right with God? If you're here and you're a child of God, and man, there's just things between you and the Lord, you need to get it settled. I want to ask you, if you're here this morning and you're a Christian, and there's just a couple things you need to settle. Don't put it off, man. Get it right, get it right, get it right. But if you're here and you're lost, <coughs> you've never been saved, you ought to run to him this morning. You ought to run to him. Young people, if you're here and you've never been saved, you ought to run to his feet this morning. You ought to give him your life before it's everlasting too late. Do it now. Do it now while you're pliable. Do it while you can. Please. And I wonder, as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, you need to come as he plays this song. I want you to listen to this song. If you're a child of God and you need to get some things right, I want you to do it, okay? sat there in that filthy place thinking about my life what a mess I had become since I'd left home so full of pride I had wasted all my substance on the pleasures of this life and there I sat so empty Listen, give me a little volume. Feeding with the swine. My heart was full of guilt and shame of all the wrongs I'd done. There was nowhere left to turn, so I made the journey home. But I feared to face my father, for I'd heard him Inside. When I saw him in the distance, I could not believe my eyes. He ran to me with open arms and took me in his warm embrace. And when I looked into his eyes, I knew my past had been erased. I had run so far away, still he was waiting patiently. And when I said I'll rise and go to him, that's when he ran to me. I too was like that wayward son 
I'd run so far from God I was left so empty From the path that I had trod In my heart I felt so hopeless From the wasted years I'd spent Oh, but one night at an altar When I cried, Lord, I repent He ran to me with open arms And took me in His warm embrace And when I looked into His eyes I knew my past had been erased Though I had run so far away waiting patiently and when I said I'll rise and go to him that's when he ran to me oh he ran to me he ran to